Hey guys, uh, this is uh, section 11.1. It's called Direct Variation. Now actually, um, in our textbook, this is the only textbook I've seen him do it separately like this. Um, this is actually section 5.7 out of the textbook that we're following. Um, but it sure makes uh, more sense if we do this lesson first before we dive into what's called in, uh, inverse variation, which is the title of 11.1. So I call this 11.1 Part 1, you guys. It's actually Section 5.7 in the book, but we'll call it 11.1 in our class here. Anyway, so two variables, x and y, show direct variation provided that uh, it's in the form of y equals kx. Okay, it's kind of like y equals mx mx plus b, but there's no b on this one right here. It's just y equals kx. Okay, and k can't be zero, all right? It's just a rule. They call it direct variation. And so uh, uh, k represents what's called the constant of variation. I don't know why they didn't choose a c for constant, but, but whatever. So example, y equal 5x shows a direct variation where 5 is the constant of variation because here's 5, 5 is this k, and k is the constant of variation. Okay, easy enough. This is an easy lesson. But these two equations, y equals 5x minus 2 or y equals x plus 5, they're not examples of direct variation because they're not in the form of y equals kx. They're in the form of y equals mx plus b. They have that b on there, so you can't have the b on there. I don't know why. They just That's just the definition of direct variation, you guys. So anyway, so tell whether the equation represents direct variation, and if so, identify the constant of variation. Okay, so here's number one, all right? Well, recall, you guys, direct variation is in the form of y equals kx. So let's take this equation and solve it for y. So first we're going to get rid of this 4x on both sides, so subtract 4x, okay? So we get uh, 5y equals negative 4x. Then we divide both sides by 5, and then we get y equals negative 4 fifths x. Now it's in the form of y equals kx, okay? Where this time k is that negative 4 fifths. So tell whether the equation represents direct variation. Yes, it represents direct variation. And then tell us, so uh, what's the constant of variation? The constant of variation is that k. So k equals that negative 4 fifths. Okay, so it's that guy right there. You just have to solve for y. How about this one? 2x minus 3, I'm sorry, 2x minus y equals 3. So solving for y, we uh, subtract the 2x and we get negative y equals negative 2x plus 3. Then divide both sides by negative 1 because we have to solve for y, not negative y. We have to solve for positive y. So that just changes the signs, changes this negative 2x to a positive 2x and that to a minus 3. Okay, that has a plus b on there, you guys. So that is not a direct variation because it's not in the form of y equals kx. It's in the form of y equals mx plus b. All right, so let's graph some of these, you guys. So these are both direct variation equations. So we're going to graph them just like we did when we graphed y equals mx plus b. So let's go ahead and add that plus b. It's actually a plus zero right there. So I've plotted those two points. It's uh, called the y-intercept. It's where it intersects the y-axis. All direct variation equations go through zero, zero, because they're always plus zero. There's nothing supposed to be there, okay? And then we're going to use the slopes, you guys. Now this slope is going to be, let's put this uh, negative three over one right there, and slope is rise over run. So from 0, 0, here I'm going to go up 2 to the right 3. So up 2 to the right 3, we'll put a point there. Here we're going to go down 3 to the right 1. So down 3 to the right 1, and we're going to put points at those two guys. Okay, there you go, and then connect them up. And there's those two lines uh, being graphed right there. All right, here's a, uh, this graph uh, is a direct variation graph. Notice it's going through 0, 0. Any graph that goes through 0, 0 is direct variation. So find an equation. Okay. So we're going to find an equation right here. All right, so there's a couple of ways. Here's the way I chose to do it here. At this point right here, since it's going through negative 1, 2, at negative 1, 2, this is x, this is y. So if we plug those into our y equals kx, because it's in direct variation, y equals kx. So we plug in this 2 right here for y, and we plug in this negative 1 right here for x. That's what this says right here. 2 equals, neg uh, equals k times negative 1. So divide both sides by negative 1, and we get k equals 2. Okay, so y equals kx. So in this case, y equals negative 2x, because k equals negative 2. Now this says find y when x is 30. Well, once we get the equation, we just plug in 30 right there. So negative 2 times 30 is going to get us 60. Oops, it's supposed to be a negative 60. Whoa, my bad. Golly. All right, let's put that negative in there. So negative 60, okay? 
All right. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So um, uh, it's negative 60. Okay. All right. Let's do, what else do I have here for us? Okay. So uh, given y varies directly as x, use the specific values to write a direct variation equation. Okay, so if y varies directly as x, you guys, okay, we have these two equations, right? Not equations, we have these two. These are actually ordered pairs. This is 3 comma 15, and this is 16 comma negative 4. So just remember, just think of what we did on that last one, where we saw the graph and it went through the points. Well, this one's going through 3, 15. This one's going through 16, negative 4. Okay, y equals kx. So let's just plug in the 15 for y and the 3 for x. Over here we're going to plug in the negative 4 for y and the 16 for x. So I'm doing them both at once right there. Okay, and then just divide out by this one. We're going to divide by 3 and this one we're going to divide by 16. Okay, and so when we do that, there we go. Uh, I get 5 on this one. K equals 5. And then over here, um, negative 4 over 16 reduces to negative 1 fourth. So now let's make it so y equals kx. So in this one's going to be y equals 5x. This one's going to be y equals negative 1 fourth x. Okay? All right. Now, if you're in my class, I don't know which one I'm going to assign to you guys. Probably the workbook, but who knows? It depends on the year and stuff. All right, you guys. Take care.